tonight I'm going to ask you a few questions, so I need your attention up here. Uh, funny thing is, this message that we're jumping into tonight is called Focus. Focus. So tonight, what I want you to do for the next several minutes, if you have a phone, I want you to put it away, and I want you to focus as best as possible, because this is what the whole message is going to be about. And we're going to look in the Bible about how even Jesus himself had to use something to help him focus. But my question for you is this. What is one thing that you can focus on for hours and not even break a sweat? Cat and the TV. What else? What are some things that you can focus on, easy to focus on? Video games. Marvel related. What else? You could just... Call of Duty, right? I was waiting for it. I was waiting for God. There it is. Uh huh. All right. Anything else? Maybe Netflix binging a little bit. How many of you just go from one episode to the next episode to the next episode to the next episode to the next episode? You don't even get up. Like, you just next episode to next episode, right? There are certain things that we have no problem at all focusing on. None. Zero. We can sit there and just go over and watch it again and again. Now let me ask you this. What is something that you have a hard time focusing on? School. School. Number one answer. What else? What else? Homework. What else? Huh? Easy gaming. I don't know what that is. Oh, you're not doing anything. What else? What are some things? History class. Good. Watch dogs. Math class, right? So all of these different things we have a really, really hard time paying attention to. It's a focusing. So we have a hard time focusing on, in on things that we just don't like, things that are not interesting to us, things that maybe bore us. We cannot zoom in and have any attention of that. But you know what is wild? So we, we were checking this out and we were doing a study. Do you know that if you search for images on the internet in one day, there are 3.2 billion images that filter through the internet every day? Every single day. Now, did you know that the average teenager might view between six to 10,000 images a day? Six to 10,000 images a day. This is what really kills me. The average attention span today of the average teenager is now less than a goldfish. I want you to understand that. A goldfish can pay attention better than we can, right? Like that is, that, that's wild. The focus, right? Everything is about focus, focusing in on all these different things. But do you know one thing that we can focus in on pretty well and not miss a beat is when we're, you know, watching TikTok videos from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. What about on Instagram? How many of you have just gone to Instagram and you start going down this hole and next thing you know, it's two hours later and you're watching cat videos, right? And you're like, why am I watching these? But it's the focus, right? Like we focus in, but then let's reverse this. If that video that you're watching doesn't catch your attention in 3.5 seconds, you scroll to the next one. You scroll to the next one. You scroll to the next one. There's something about our attention and getting our focus onto things that the world really knows very well. In ads, in advertisement, commercials, all these different things that pop up on your Snapchat, all of these different things have to do with the focus that you choose to have. And so you gotta understand that there are many things that are out there with focus. Now, the common answer of when do we have a hard time focusing? School, right? We have a hard time with that. Now we know with school comes homework. So let me ask you this. What is the best environment or way for you to focus to get your homework done? How do you focus best? When it's quiet. What else? Huh? Fidget, right? Yes, fidget. That's great. Yes. Music, okay, that's another good one. That's great, right? So sometimes when the room is quiet, right? Sometimes when no one is talking to you, right? And you're able to do it. Some of us, we need to turn our notifications off. Some of us need to have something in our hands to fidget with, to play with, and to do all that with. You know, so whatever it might be, there are certain environments where that do help us focus. And what's interesting is some of you will focus in certain environments, and some of you will be in those same environments, and you can't focus. 
You know, I always use the example in my office, for me to focus when I need to focus, I have to have a lot of things happening and going on for me to be able to focus. So like when I write messages to be able to share, I have usually the TV on, I have music playing, I have something else going on, I have people in my office walking around, and I am perfectly fine focusing in on what I have. If it's too quiet, it drives me crazy. I can't handle too quiet. I don't like too quiet. Even when I go to bed, I have to have a, a noise machine or something going on because I, I, I have to, it has to do with my focus. So there are certain environments that we enter into that help us focus better than others. When you go into a classroom and you just have to sit at a seat all day long and there's no, nothing, like there's no boards, there's nothing to look at, all you do is count. How many of you ever sat in class and count the ceiling tiles because you're so bored? Yep. How many of you ever gone in and, you, and, and like you can go into one room, you're like, oh, I know that room's got like 28 ceiling tiles. Why? Because your focus was so off that you have to look to something. Focus is part of life. Many of your, probably your parents, your grandparents, teachers said all you need to do is focus, 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 make sure you're focusing. You hear me say it. I'll say, hey, put your phone away, sit up in your seat, look at me while I'm looking at you, listen to what I'm saying. Everything that we evolve in life really has to do with a focus that we need to have. Now what's interesting is some of you could sit and draw the entire time and still stay focused on anything that I'm saying. Some of you just sit there and you look at me and you're, you're, you're getting it all and you're focused. But focus is so interesting because, you know, with focus, it also kind of plays into our spiritual life. How many of you have ever said, hey, you know what, I'm going to read my Bible or I'm going to pray. And as soon as you start doing that, you lose focus, Right? Really, how many of us have ever focused on trying to spend time with God and we're not able to do it because we get distracted? Like, okay, God, I'm gonna read my Bible. And so you start reading your Bible and next thing your phone buzzes. And then you check the text message. Then you check the next text message. And then someone sent you a video. And then you watch that video. And then like next thing you know, like an hour and a half, two hours later, if you're not focusing on what you needed to because you're focusing on that. Or how many times you're like, I, I'm gonna pray. And then you start praying and then you lose focus on what you're praying for because you're so distracted by everything else that's going on. See, focus, even in our spiritual walk with God, is so important. Listen to me, if there's a message that you're gonna hear from me that might be one of the most important messages I ever talk about tonight, this is gonna be one of them. Because being focused requires you giving something your undivided attention. And that's what God wants from us. God wants your undivided attention, and it's something that we need to, to, to have this understanding of. Do you know that you can practice to have better focus? Did you know that? Do you know that there are certain things that you can do that help you focus better? And I'm not just taking like saying, like, oh, just go get some medicine, that'll help you focus. No, there's actually things that you can do, practices that help you focus better in what you do. Spiritually, it's the same thing. Spiritually, there are things that we can do. When it's hard to pray, we pray a little bit harder. When it's hard to worship, we worship a little bit harder. There are certain practices in our Christian walk that when we do them, it helps us focus in on what God has. Tonight, I wanna to read you a story from the Bible that some of you might have heard, some of you might have not heard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a few verses, I'm gonna explain what's happening, and then I'm gonna talk about it and then read a few more. But how many of you have ever seen like on those cartoons or on the movies, or if you've ever seen Emperor's New Groove, they do this, where you have a guy who's trying to make a decision and an angel pops up on one side and a devil pops up on the other side. You know what I'm talking about? Like there's a little angel, there's a devil, and you're trying to figure out what decision to make, and the angel says do this, the little devil says do that. They go back and forth and they argue. Usually the angel has a harp and has a white robe on, has a halo, and usually the devil has a pitchfork and a long tail and like two, you know, two like pointy horns on its head or whatever like that. And that's a depiction oftentimes of when we have to make a decision. Do we go after what is good? Or do we go after what is wrong? But what's super interesting in this Bible that we're gonna read in the Bible story is that Jesus actually dealt with this firsthand. Jesus actually himself was in a situation where he had to make a decision between what he wanted and what the devil told him to do. So let's jump into this passage tonight because it's super interesting. Matthew chapter four, it says this. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was then tempted by the devil. He had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. The devil came to him and said, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, 
but in every word that comes from the mouth of God. So here you have Jesus. This is before he even starts his ministry. He's been in the wilderness in the desert for 40 days and nights fasting, meaning he hasn't had any food. Most people he had in no water either. No bread, no water. He was just fasting. Spiritually, fasting is a thing to help us spiritually get in line with what God has. But I know this. I know when I don't eat in a few hours, I get grumpy. If I'm going to not eat for a couple days, I'm going to be really tired and irritable, and I'm going to be probably mean and everything. How many of you have gotten hungry before? See, some of you are lying right now because you don't get hungry, you get hangry. I know because I've seen it. Like you want that food so bad that you become grumpy and you become mean and you're just like, give me some nuggets, right? So Jesus is in this position where he's really hungry and he's spending time with God and all of a sudden the devil, knowing he's tired, the devil himself comes to Jesus. Now it's not like what we think it is where I believe the devil was in some like outfit and everything like that. No, the devil probably showed up just looking like an average guy. The Bible actually says that he comes as an angel of light. So he's not this big, scary-looking dude, but he's this dude that probably looks pretty good that can influence people to make decisions. But he shows up to where Jesus is. He says, Jesus, I know that you're hungry, so why don't you just take that stone and make it into bread and give yourself something to eat? Because you can do that type of thing. But Jesus says, and this is very important, he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So then after that situation, the devil said, all right, let me take you to this next part. So then it says, the devil took him to the holy city, and he stood him at the top of the temple. It's the highest place in the city. He said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. His angels will, concerning you, they will lift you up in their hands so that you won't even strike your foot against the ground. Jesus answered, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So here we are going from turning a rock into bread where the devil's like, all right, come with me. We're going to go to the highest part of the temple. And all of a sudden, they're at the highest part of the temple. They're overlooking it. And the devil says, you know what, Jesus, just throw yourself off of here. And as you throw yourself off of here, angels will come and they will, they will just appear and they will catch you and you're not even going to hurt yourself. Why don't you give us a show? Show everyone what you can do because you're the son of God. But again, Jesus responds. What does he say? It is written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And then we move to one last part of this interaction. It says, and again, then the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of of the world and of the splendor. He said, all of this I will give to you if you just bow down and worship me. Jesus said, away from me, Satan. Why? Because it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the, day, then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. So what does this have to do with the focus that we're talking about? Because it's very interesting in this whole story, this is actually Jesus, who we talk a lot about, being tempted by the devil himself to make decisions where he's going to give in to temptation. He's, he's hungry. Why don't you make yourself this? Why don't, I, why don't you throw yourself off? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? The devil is trying to tempt him into doing something. And it is clear one thing, that Jesus knew what to do when he was tempted. He knew where to draw this line to say, no, this isn't going to happen. It's clear that Jesus knew the kind of strength the future would hold and how important it would be to have a focus. And what's more incredible about this story is that when you read three things that Jesus said to the devil that are very important, each time he was tempted, what did he say? It is written, it is written, it is written. See, even back then, you have to understand that part of the Bible had already been written down. It was already a historical thing that was being composed by people. So even Jesus himself knew up to that point what we know as the Old Testament. In the Bible, there's the Old Testament, and that's what was written up to this point. And Jesus knew the Old Testament. He knew what was said. So every time the devil would question the identity of Jesus by asking him to do certain things, Jesus focused in on what he had learned through the Bible. See, he knew that the focus at some point was going to be important. He knew at some point that I have to focus in on knowing the Bible so that I can know what to do when the enemy comes against me. He he could have said, well, my dad says this, my dad says that. But that's not what he said. 
When the devil told him to put his life at risk, Jesus quoted a Bible verse. When he said to take the bread or the stone and make it to bread, he quoted a Bible verse. When the devil said, hey, bow down and worship me, what did he do? He quoted a Bible verse. You know what this tells me, students? This tells me if the Bible was important to Jesus, the Bible needs to be important to us. The Bible needs to be important to you and to me. We need to know what the Bible says so that when the enemy comes against us, we know what to do. But we need to focus in on what the Bible actually says. Because every week you hear me come up and me or Zeth or a guest speaker, we're like, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, read this, read this. And we put all these Bible verses up on the screen for you. But do you really focus in on what they say? I hope you do. I hope that you can understand this because there are gonna be hard times that you're gonna face in certain situations and moments where you're gonna need to have this connection to what the Bible really says. And they're like, listen, I love being able to have the Bible app on my phone. If I need to read scriptures, I can look it up right there and I can go. If there are situations that I'm dealing with a problem, I don't know what to do, I can go to my Bible app, I can research certain subjects, and it's amazing. If you have a phone and you don't have the Bible app, I wanna encourage you, download the Bible app. Download it, make sure you have the Bible app. Hey, listen, you can read the Bible app every day. You can get on plans, you can do all this different stuff. And I love having that. But there are moments in my life where I don't have access to that. So all that I can deal with is what I have in my heart and what I have in my mind. So it's super important that we know the Bible. This is what it says in Psalms 119. Teach me, teach me, Lord, all the ways of your decrees, that I might follow them all the way until the end. Give me understanding so that I might keep your law and obey it with my whole heart. He's talking about the Bible. Let me know the Bible. It says, direct me in the path of your commands for where I find delight, and then turn my heart towards your statues and not towards what I want. Turn my eyes from the worthless things and preserve my life according to your what? According to your word. We might not know exactly what's going on with the author and what he wrote here. Um, there, you know, this was like oh, thousands of years ago and we're not sure what's going on. But the one thing that we can get from this is he's asking God, give me understanding, direction, and focus when I read your word. Allow it to be something that I can preserve in my life according to it, that I can have this, that I have access to this. Guys, listen to me. If you want to have a strong relationship with God, if you want this Christian life, then you need to focus in on what the Bible says. You need to know what the Bible says. It's super important. The psalmist here found this direction and he's talking here and Jesus fought the enemy with the Bible. So the power is basically this. We need to focus in on what God said. We need to focus in on what God said. And you might say like, hey, I don't know what God said. Well, let me tell you, you might not verbally hear God say, hey, but God has said everything he needed to say right here. Everything that you ever need to know about God is found in Scripture. Anything that you need to know about fighting the enemy or resisting temptation or overcoming anxiety or dealing with anger, dealing with fear, dealing with confusion, everything that you need from God is found here. He's already spoken to you. So many times we're like, well, God, I want to pray right now. I want to give you an answer. For some of us, he already gave us the answer. It's in the Bible. But we need to know the Bible We need to have understanding of why this is so important to be able to have access to. In order to focus on what God had said, we need to literally build up something in our hearts and our minds that when we hear the word of God, we focus in on what it said. See, what I don't want Wednesday nights to be, I don't want Wednesday nights to be math class. I don't want it to be biology. I don't want it to be history. I don't want you just to hear me spitting out facts and be like, okay, that was cool, and then forget as you walk out the door. That's not what we want this to be. We want the word of God to be something that you get into your heart and it's able to transform you and change you from the inside out. That's what the Bible does. So how in the world do we focus? We live in a world that is competing for your focus everywhere and anywhere. Think about that. Anywhere you go, it's a focus thing. People are trying, you're trying to get you to focus here, focus there, drive this, dress like that, wear this, do this, all these different things. It's all about focus. Even spiritually, our walk with God has to be about focus. And the way that we're able to focus is, number one, is this. If you begin to read God's word. Begin to read God's word. 
One way to, be, to start all of this is just begin to read. Find out what the Bible says. See what God's word has. And listen, you can, you can pick it up, and I know people will pick it up and say, all right, God, wherever my finger leads, that's what I'm gonna read today. Now, I don't recommend doing that because you might be really confused. But again, we have a thing called the Bible app that you can download. There's plans that you can actually go and join and you can read through. There's actually a verse every day and a prayer every day and a thought every day on the Bible app that you can go and have access to. That's the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up. First thing I do is I open up my Bible app and, and I begin to read what is the verse of the day? What is it that I need today? Because I need focus. I need to focus in on what's gonna happen. I need to focus in on what's going on. The point is to get into a habit of reading what God said. How do you develop a habit? Well, you do the same thing constantly for a certain amount of days and it becomes habit. How do you learn how to brush your teeth? Habit. How do you learn how to tie your shoes? Habit. How do you learn how to do all these different things that you do? Habit. You've done the same thing every day for so many days where you don't even really think about it. You can just do it. See, a lot of us, like, we don't even think about tying a shoe. We just can tie the shoe and boom, it's done. It's not really a thought. It's just something that has become part of our life. The word of God needs to become part of your life. It needs to become something that's a habit. So you have to focus in. And there are great resources that, like, we can get to you if you want to have even more of, like, learning how to have this. And they have all these different things available for us, but we need to read God's word. Listen to me, students. The Bible is so rich. You can read this from cover to cover and you still don't get all of it. We have people that have been studying the Bible for hundreds of years, thousands of years, and they still can't grasp everything that God says. I can read one verse one day and not understand it and then go back a couple days later and read it and it blows my mind. This is what's so cool about this book that separates it from everything else. The Bible is the living word of God. It's active. It means that what you read in here about God is actually happening right now. It's actually happening right now. And the Bible says it's useful for teaching. So to teach you, to teach you all about who God is, everything that he has for you. So it's useful for teaching. It's actually useful for rebuking, meaning that it tells us when we screw up. It tells us when we need a rebuke. And a rebuke is, hey man, you messed up. This is what the Bible says, you can do better. But then also for teaching, rebuking, and training in righteousness. Meaning, if you wanna get closer to God, if you wanna train in knowing God more, if you wanna be like Jesus as best as possible, get into the Bible. Get into the Bible. So in order for us to, to you know, process this, you read the God's word, and then what do you do? Well, after you read something, you oftentimes learn from it. So you read God's word, and then you learn about God's word. There are so many ways to continue learning about God's word and what it says. You can do that again through apps. You can do that online. You can do that by coming to refuge each week. You can do that by coming to church on Sunday and trying your hardest to pay attention to what is being spoke wherever you go to church because that once that's what's being said to you helps you give understanding to what is going on and you learn. Surround yourself with it. And listen, there are great, there are great like pastors out there. There are great people out there. But get around good leaders who can help you. You say, hey, I just read this. What does this mean? You learn. See, you ever just read something for school and then you totally don't know what you read? You're like, oh, this is like your teacher says, hey, read this, and you read it, and you're like, I have no idea what this says. Or they ask you a question from it, and you're like, oh, that was in here? You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, I didn't even know that was a question, right? Why? Because sometimes we read just to read. But what if we were to read to learn what God says? So that like when we read a verse that, that, that we learn it, and we're like, man, that, that, is, that is amazing. Okay, think about this. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Well, what does that mean? It means that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus for us. I can know what the verse says, but then I can learn what it says. But this is what I'm gonna tell you. This might be the most important part, especially when it comes to Focus. Because you read God's word, you learn it, but then you memorize God's word. You get it into your memory. You get it into something that you can rattle off. See, some of you, like I could ask you certain questions about certain things, and you would be able to rattle off very stupid statistics. Like I am full of useful knowledge, and I'm full of unuseful knowledge as well. So certain things like I know a lot about, and then there are the dumbest things in the world that I remember. Like some of the dumbest facts I can remember about certain things. 
we, we tend to remember these things and memorize it. Like, I can memorize song lyrics from the 90s that I'm like, how do I even remember this song? See, some of you, I could ask you about Marvel. I could ask you about Star Wars. I could ask you about clothing, or I could ask you about what's going on this show or that show. I could ask you about the Netflix show, The Outer Banks. I could ask you about all these different things, and you would be able to tell me certain things. Why? Because you memorized them. You knew them. Some of the stuff you did retain from school, you'd be surprised what you remember from school. If I were to ask you certain questions, you would know the answer. Why? Because you memorized them. This is what we have to do with the Bible. Guys, listen to me. Students, listen to me. In order for us to make it, we have to memorize what the Bible says. If it was important for Jesus to remember, it's going to be important for us to remember it too. If Jesus memorized it, we need to memorize it. It needs to be something we bring into us. And it doesn't mean you need to memorize the whole Bible from, Gen- from the very beginning to the very end, from Genesis to Revelation. No. It means that you might need to commit to yourself certain verses that are going to help you in times of need. It means that there are certain verses that you're going to say, hey, listen, I got I to gotta remember these things. I got to remember when I think I can't do anything and I, I just, I'm stupid and I, I have no self-worth that I, like, I'm not going to be able to do this. No, where the Bible says that you are an overcomer in who Jesus is. Remembering that verse. Remembering the verse like Micah 6 eight. What does God want me to do? He wants me to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before him. It was one of these verses I memorized because I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I have a hard time acting like a Christian and knowing what to do. So as a teenager, I said, you know what? I'm going to memorize this verse. Well, I act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before God. For some of us, it's things that we need to remember that brings a meaning to our life. For those of us that feel like we have sinned so bad and we're not going to be able to make it, and how could God ever love us? Well, one of the verses I remember reading is Romans 8, 38, and 39. It says, for I am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons nor the present nor the future nor any power can separate me from the love that is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Guys, see, when when you know the Bible and can memorize it, it can give you what you need when you need it. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can handle this. Philippians 4.13. I don't know if if God even wants me to do anything. Jeremiah 29.11. For I know the plans I have for you. See, when you know the Bible, you are able to have access to it so that it can help you in certain areas, but you have to focus. You have to focus in on what God has. See, the reason why Jesus was able to respond the way that he did is because he focused in on how important the word of God was. Over the next several weeks, we're gonna continue talking about what we need to focus on, but this is clear to me. The one thing that we need most is we need to focus on what God said. The problem with that is there's a lot that God says. There's a whole lot that he says. Guys, it's not easy to stay focused, especially in these days. We're connected to a never-ending stream of notifications, ad, messages, videos, posts, entertainment, and all of these different things. But it doesn't matter how many things come about, there's only one important thing that remains, and it's the word of God. The word of God is living and active and breathing, and the word of God is forever. It doesn't change. That's what's so cool. The Bible doesn't change. It doesn't change. So students, listen to me. If you're going to grow in relationship with God, you need to dive into the word of God. The Bible is the most important tool that you can have access to to grow in your faith, to grow in who you are as a person, to treat people the way they need to be treated, to to really to love God the way that we need to love God. It all is about focusing on what God has said. And I know, like, we, like we've all struggled with our homework before. We've struggled with paying attention to the story that the person has told. And we've also have struggled with spending time with God. So how do we overcome that? Well, let me give you the best way to do this. Start small and work your way up. What does that mean? So many, maybe you're in this room, you're like, Micah, I have a hard time praying. We'll start with a 30-second prayer every day. 30 seconds. You can do 30 seconds. You can pray for 30 seconds. You can pray for your day. You can pray for your family. You can pray for your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your teachers, whoever it might be. Give 30 seconds. Start there. Every day. Say every day at 7 a.m. when I wake up or every day at 4 p.m. or before I go to bed, I'm going to spend 30 seconds in prayer. Spend 30 seconds in prayer. Let that be it. Start there. 
And then maybe you'll find yourself at 45 seconds the next couple of days, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And then that prayer life begins to evolve. You start small, you work your way up. It's the same way with the Bible. You start small. If you're really gonna dive into this and focus on what God said, start small. Read one or two verses out of the Bible. Where do you wanna start? Start Matthew, start in Mark, start Luke, John. Study the life of Jesus. People always ask me, well, where should I start with the Bible? Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, pick one. Pick one that talks about Jesus. If you wanna know about being a Christian, see how Jesus lived. Study his life. When you study his life, you'll be able to say, this is what we need to uh, try to be like. This is who we're going after. It's all about Jesus. But start with a few verses, one, two, or three. Start there. If something you don't understand, read it again. Guys, you, you all know how to use Google. You all know how to use YouTube. You all know how to you know, research things on all these things. Look them up. Begin to look for the answers. Well, what does this mean? What does that mean? Come in and ask me. Ask Seth. Ask Pastor Jim. Ask a leader. But start small. Maybe you want to be like Bethany, my wife. You know what Bethany does? Every morning, she grabs her cup of coffee, she turns on her Bible app, and she has it read to her. She just has it read to her. She follows along as it reads because when she hears it, that's how she learns. So she's able to sit there and listen to it. The Bible app will read to you. You can go through and do that. But start small and begin to work your way up. Because this is what I love about the Bible. And I'm going to be closing here in a few minutes. This is what I love about the Bible is the Bible becomes addicting. When you begin to understand it, you want to study it more and more and more. And then you find yourself, you'll, you'll find yourself with, with different Bibles all over your desk and commentaries all over your floor and researching all this stuff because you're so in love with God's word because you know what it does for your life. I would not be where I am today if I did not know the Bible. That's how important this book is. So in order for us to focus on what God has, we need to focus on what God has said. The way that we can focus on what God has said is by reading the Bible and knowing it. Reading it, learning it, memorizing it. Start there. Start with small verses too. Begin to build your way up and be able to discover who Jesus is in such a remarkable way. Because here's my heart for everyone. Every teenager that has ever come through refuge, just two weeks ago on Tuesday, it would have been 12 years I've been doing this here in Altoona. 12 years. It's a long time. I've known some of you since you were way, way small, like Roman. 12 years. And this has been my goal since the very beginning, is that as you grow into an adult, as you mature into an adult, that you fall deeper in love with God every year. That each year that goes by, you learn more about Jesus. As each year that goes by, you fall more in love with God. That is, that is my heart's desire for every student that has ever come through refuge. And one way you can do that is by staying in the word of God. Saying like, listen, I'm not gonna go to bed until I read the Bible. I'm not gonna do anything until I just read and learn. You want a physical Bible? I will get you one. I will get you one. Or open the Bible app. Begin to read. Begin to do whatever you can. Why? Because the Bible is going to change your life. It gives you the answers that you need. It gives you the peace that can be there. The Bible says it's actually a light into our path in darkness. That we can actually like light up this world with the darkness that everything that's going on, this is going to be the path that we need to follow. That's how powerful the word of God is. But you need to focus in on what God said if you're going to make it. I'm going to tell you right now, if you think you'll make it without God's word, you won't. We cannot make it on our own. We can't just make it thinking that, oh, God's just a good God. And just on that thought, live life. No, you need to discover everything that God has said about you and about him and about our world. That is the way you're able to mature into who God wants you to be. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Super, super simple message tonight. This is something that I hope you focus in on. I gave you guys just a few minutes. It wasn't even a long one. But this is what I want you to remember tonight. One simple thing. Focus on what God said. Focus on what God said. That's the prayer for tonight. So if you go home and mom and dad, what did you learn tonight? I got to focus on what God said. What's that mean? I got to read the Bible. I got to know the Bible. Focus in on what God said. Because as you focus in on what God said, it'll change your life. 
As you focus in on what God said, you'll mature into the young person that God wants you to be. When you focus on God's life, guess what? It will help you not make stupid decisions. When you focus in on what God said, it will help you overcome things like depression and anxiety. When you focus on what God said, it will help you overcome confusion. When you focus on what God said, you'll have the hope of the joy of the Lord of knowing who that is. You'll have a light into a dark path. Focus in on what God said. God, tonight we come before you, and we have a focus problem. Sometimes we can pay attention, sometimes we can't. And sometimes when we spend time with you, we want to spend time with you, and our heart is in it, and we're trying our best, but we lose our focus because we get so distracted. So God, I pray tonight that we will focus in on what you said. That we will have an understanding that the Bible is so important and it's such a thing that we need in our life to be able to change and transform. And so God, I pray that in this room, that this will be a room of young people who tonight will say, I will not let a day go by without reading the Bible. I'm gonna read it every day. I'm gonna start small, I'm gonna build up, and I'm gonna learn everything that God has said about me, about what he says, how I should love, how I should live, how I should be, how I should act, all these different things that you've said, God, and not only about us, but about others and about yourself, and you will just be able to allow us to become people that love reading the word. God, I hope and I pray that tonight we can focus in on what you said. We can focus in on what you said. As everything is contained in this book, and this book can be the one thing that transforms our life. So God, I thank you and praise you for each and every student and leader. I pray that you will allow this to burn deep into our hearts, and that God, that you will allow us to be able to change, be changed from the inside out, knowing what the word of God says. And so Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen.